And I have with me my friend and the just the brain of so much that happens in Team Trump, and that is the one and only Laura Trump. Laura, thank you so much for being with us, taking the special time to do a one-on-one -on -one for us. We're so thrilled here at America's Voice. And I just want to get from you, this is really like the band's back together. Here we are. This is right. How does it feel for you? Oh my gosh. Well, thanks for having me. This is amazing. I mean, anyone who's ever been to a Trump rally knows, knows there's no place in the world like a Trump rally. And it mm -hmm. feels, Gina, almost like this isn't just a rally. This is sort of like the kickoff to reopening our country, to yeah. things getting back to normal, to having, you know, the United States come back together again as one. And so we're thrilled to be here. This is so fun. Um, and it really feels like although we launched the campaign actually almost exactly a year ago, this is really our relaunch of the campaign. So we're excited. The people here in Tulsa have been so wonderful. We're, we're just thrilled with the, uh, the enthusiasm and the love for this president and our country. So we couldn't be happier. Absolutely. It, you know, there's a lot of just darkness, I don't know, happening in the country. And it seems so antithetical to everything I know about this president, about your family, um, about really all things Trump. The Trump story is one of, of light and, and happiness and success and winning and good. Um, and, and so it seems to me like we really do need this presidency more than ever. But what clarifies that for you? Well, I think it's very easy to see right now the stark contrast between Donald Trump and his presidency. We saw success that has been unparalleled, really in any administration. This president has only been in office for one term, and yet he's done more in one term, less than one term even, than most presidents could ever dream of doing in two full terms in office. Just before COVID hit, you saw historic highs in the stock market, historic lows in unemployment. We had a million more jobs in January than we even had people to fill them, rebuilding and revitalizing our military, and renegotiating bad trade deals. This is a president who stands up for the spirit of America. We are one American people, and you contrast that with these Democrat-run cities out there. And if you want a glimpse, Gina, as to what it could frighteningly look like if Donald Trump was not in office, if Joe Biden and the radical socialist Democrats took control of this country, look no further than Seattle, look no further than Portland, than the destruction that we saw in Minneapolis. These are great American cities. They have been turned on their head. They've been absolutely destroyed. They may never come back thanks to what these Democrats who are in office are allowing to happen. So I just think as we head towards November, people have to make a choice on November 3rd. Either you are choosing a prosperous, successful, strong, patriotic America, or you are choosing this absolutely, and you put it perfectly, very dark, grim, uh, unseen version of our country that really, uh, it's not the America that so many of us know. I want my kids to grow up in the America I got to grow up in. That is Donald Trump's America. And if you let the Democrats take control of things, it could be an absolutely terrifying place. What was his mood on the way here? Was he excited to be with his people again? I, just knowing him the way I do, uh, you know, as little, you know, I've not known him for a long time, but I feel like I've gotten to know him enough to know that like, he really craves being around the flyover country people, the heartland of America. And having been stuck in the DC bubble for so long, I just, I would love to have seen the anticipation on his face to be here. Tell us about it. Well, nothing makes the president happier than being with the great patriots of this country. And again, there's no place like a Trump rally and, and nowhere that I think he feels the love from the people quite like this. He can reach out, it's a reciprocal thing. Right. He's putting it out there and people are giving it back and he loves, loves, loves it. So he's been excited to get back out there and hold a rally and get back out on the campaign trail and really connect with the people of this country for so long. Obviously we've all been locked down. Obviously things have been very different in this country. So for him to be able to anticipate and look forward to this moment right now tonight uh, with the great people here in Oklahoma, I mean, he was thrilled beyond belief and I can't wait to see him afterwards yeah. to see how happy he is because nothing makes him happier than doing this. That's absolutely right. If you had a message, if you could just say one thing to 
the people that seem to so misunderstand who he is today, um, that are you know that are just maybe becoming politically active and have maybe participated in a in a in a protest or uh, you know a, a, some sort of demonstration, to explain to them what you think they don't understand about this man that is your father-in-law, that is our president, what would that be? Well, he's standing up for your right to be out there protesting. You know, this is a president that believes in the Constitution and it guides him every single day. I always say to people, you have to remember that Donald Trump didn't need this job. He didn't have to do this. Donald Trump uh, didn't do this to become more well known. He was a very famous guy. He didn't do this because he thought it would be easy. And at the end, he could write a book, his memoir, just sell to people. Donald Trump arguably will be the only president to leave the White House poorer than when he went in. And many cannot say that, if any. I think he might be the only one. He did this, Gina, because he loves this country so much. And I think there was, there was a long time that he saw this country heading in the wrong direction. And he was, we would get continually frustrated and say, why doesn't somebody do this? Why doesn't somebody stand up and fix these problems? It seems so obvious to him. So I get that he's not the typical politician, and that is what makes Donald Trump really so great. That's why he's so good at this job. He's a businessman. He approaches things from that mentality. So you might not love everything he tweets. You might not love the way he says everything. He's certainly transparent. You can always uh, get a, an idea of what he's thinking, but he truly loves this country. He wants every American to have their chance at the American dream because he was given so much success in life. He earned and worked his way up and, and look what he became. He wants every American to have that pride that he's felt his entire life. Um, so I wish more people thought of that. This is not a, a job that he wanted to do because of any other reason than his true love for this country. He's reached into groups of people that have traditionally been Democrat voters, and we know that between 20 and 25 percent of those who show up to Trump rallies are usually Democrats and independents who have never voted Republican before they voted for him. Um, you and I got to know each other, um, became close at least through Women for Trump, yeah. which was your baby. And um, But he's also reached into um, the gay groups, the black groups, the Hispanic groups, the immigrants. I mean, the list goes on and on, the groups that he's reached into that really no Republican president has ever had the courage to reach into before, and groups, and I think this is where it gets really important, groups that the Democrats have thought that they owned at election time, and every four years up America into particular you know groups of people and saying you must feel very sorry for yourself become a victim and vote for us again and then they forget about him for the next four years and then they come back to them at election time this president uh, has done so much for all of these people because he believes that a stronger America is stronger for everybody um, what do you see him doing in his second term if he's elected that will unite us in ways that we've never been united before well, let me just say you're exactly right. The the idea that anyone has any obligation to vote for a certain party is absolutely ridiculous. The Democrat Party loves identity politics. They love to divide us. Donald Trump has always said we are one American people. We all bleed the same red blood. That has always been his message. And he has reached out to people that traditionally have been totally passed by by the Republican Party because people said, no, the, the, these folks will never vote for you. Well, they voted for Donald Trump and they're going to come out bigger for Donald Trump. I just think, look, there's so much more success on the horizon. There's so much more to be done with this president. Um, and you see the things that he was able to do, things like criminal justice reform that the Democrats for years and years said, oh, someone should do this. We're champions of this. Right. Donald Trump got it done. Just this past week, this historic executive order on police reform, again, something the Democrats always talked about, Donald Trump got it done. Things like paid family leave. So there's so much more of that to come in the future. 
but we've got to have four more years of Donald Trump to do it. And really, the sky's the limit. You know, once we get out of the, the COVID state that we seem to have been in for a couple of months, we're already coming out of it. The May jobs report was amazing. I think June is going to be even better. We're going to see that V-shaped recovery. Um, once we come out of that, we're going to get the economy back again. We're going to get all those jobs back up and running in this country. And then it's time to move on to the next phase and get so much more accomplished for America. When do you think the next rally is going to be? And more importantly, are Luke and Carolina ready to let mama go back on the campaign trail? Oh, I don't know if they're ready for it. Every time I FaceTime my son, he's crying because oh, they got spoiled over this whole time. Having I home. know, I know yeah. they did. I got spoiled to be around <laughs> yeah. them, too. Um, but they'll let me go back out. It's for grandpa. So they're very happy to do that. The next Trump rally, I think, will be in probably two or three weeks. We're still finalizing things. Uh, but we want to keep this going. Look, the, the momentum never stopped with the Trump campaign. We never shut down, even after no. the president was elected, inaugurated. We kept going. Uh, we've been holding the rallies for the president all along, and we're not going to stop now. We're going to pick up, move on, and uh, we're going to get going on the campaign trail. We can't wait. Laura Trump, from our audience at America's Voice, thank you to your family for standing up for America and for being all that you are. We appreciate you, and we pray safety over you. Thank you. All right, back to you.